So urban air mobility promises to revolutionize how people and cargo get around. And at the forefront of these efforts is a company called Joby Aviation. They're developing an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, and they're building it right inside this building. Let's go take a look inside. Today we're visiting Joby's pilot production facility in Marina, California. This is where Joby is building its first production conforming eVTOL aircraft, several of which it will deliver to the U.S. Air Force. Joby plans to have its aircraft FAA certified for commercial air taxi operations by 2025. So my name is Didier Papadopoulos and I effectively lead the uh, aircraft side of the uh, Joby organization. So that means the design, the manufacturing and all of the supporting infrastructure such as supply chain quality and so on. And uh, excited to walk you around today to see uh, all the cool things that we're working on. The site here is what we call the uh, pilot plant or pilot manufacturing site. It's effectively where we are going to uh, develop our manufacturing process and produce the initial uh, production airplanes from here. So we will be building tens of airplanes from this site. The building we're in here is really focused on all of the composite manufacturing. So any composite part on the aircraft is really manufactured here before they move into the assembly side of the manufacturing plant. We make composite parts in primarily two uh, methods. One of them is a more conventional hand layup like you're seeing on this side. And then the other one is using advanced fiber placement machines. So generally speaking for larger parts, we will use the EFP machines to build parts such as the wing skin, uh, for example, or the tail or wing spars. Those are much larger parts and we can benefit from the repeatability of automation, the faster pace of automation to where we can build maybe 10, 20 times faster than what we might be able to do with uh, a more hand layup conventional methodology. Once we've gone through, let's say, the AFP, AFP machines and uh, built the composite part, one of the things we have to go through next is going into this autoclave machine. This is our largest machine, so you can effectively put a full wing in it, add, as well as some additional parts, and then cure the product, after which we can then ship it from here all the way up to the uh, inspection phases and then into the assembly where we start putting all these parts uh, together. This is a bit sort of a, the last, in some ways, the last stage after we've manufactured really the composite part. Uh, we bring it to the site to do non-destructive inspection. So this machine is effectively trying to understand if there's any defects within the part that we fabricated, potentially, for example, some uh, voids within the uh, composite material. And it does that without necessarily affecting the part itself because it is non-destructive. Every piece of our equipment goes through some sort of non-destructive testing in addition to other things like visual and dimensional testing and, and so on. You're seeing some of the investments we're putting in place in order to allow us to scale into larger manufacturing. As we scale into our larger manufacturing footprint, we have to have demonstrated that these capabilities work and optimize these capabilities here so we can start building hundreds and hundreds of airplanes per year. Joby says its pilot manufacturing facility will initially produce about a dozen aircraft per year. To build hundreds of aircraft per year, Joby will need to scale up its production capacity significantly, but they seem well poised to pull that off thanks to a close partnership with Toyota, a company that makes millions of cars per year. What is Joby's relationship with Toyota? Yeah, so uh, Toyota is a partner, uh, a collaborator, they're also an investor, and they're also a supplier. So Toyota supplies uh, part of the components that go into our equipment. They also collaborate with us on designs. They collaborate with us on manufacturing processes, layouts, quality management, development, and so on. So they're really integral to our business um, from beginning to end, and we're really grateful for that partnership. When Joby opens its phase one production facility, it will look a lot like the production line here in Marina, just at a much larger scale. The 580,000 square foot manufacturing plant is expected to employ about 1,800 people. Those engineers and technicians will be doing much of the same work we see happening here in Marina, using the same equipment and processes from the manufacturing and testing of components to the final aircraft assembly. So what are we looking at here? We are sitting in the final assembly building. 
This is where all the parts that we uh, manufactured on the composite side, or all the parts that we did on the metallic side, or all the electronics, powertrain, battery, eventually make their way into this building. This is one of the sections of this larger building, and this section is really focused around the sub-assemblies. Sub so this is where we really put the wing together, we put the fuse together, we put the tail together before they move into the other section and start getting mated together. So the, one of the examples you're looking at here is a part of the wing that we call the ladder being bonded together. Once that's done, then we'll do a few other things on the inside. Then we'll take the top and bottom skin, bond them to the wing, and then it's ready to go. This is the section where after we complete the sub-assemblies, so let's say the wing or the fuse or the tail, and obviously you can see the wing here, um, we de deliver it here and the team now starts uh, completing it in terms of installing some of the electronics in it uh, as an example in some of the additional additions like uh, control surfaces and, and so on. So this is sort of the almost the final stage. There's one more stage after this one before the aircraft rolls out. So the propulsion unit and the batteries, are those at the next stage or does that, does that happen here? Yeah, so at the next stage, which uh, we won't go and take a look at uh, right now, is where effectively once we have made it the wing fuse and uh, landing gear together, this is where we do the last installations. So we'll be putting things like the uh, avionics flight deck, we'll put the propulsion unit and we'll uh, put the uh, propeller assembly as well. We'll do all the final checks and then we can roll out the aircraft and deliver it to the flight test team. Joby does its flight testing right here outside the pilot production line in Marina. This is also where it will do flight testing for its FAA type certification program. Joby might make some minor tweaks to the aircraft before it builds the FAA conforming version it will use for those tests. But the aircraft coming off the production line today are essentially what the company intends to certify in 2025. My name is Bonnie Simi, and I'm head of air operations and people. That means basically overseeing the airline side of, of Joby, as well as HR. So our aircraft here is four passengers and one pilot, and we'll be using it in basically as aerial ride sharing. So think of it as Tesla and Uber in the air. It's a way of thinking that. So you'll call up uh, on our app that you want to go from point A to point B. A car would pick you up, bring you to our vertiport, and then would take you to wherever your destination is. Our aircraft, as you can see, it has six propulsion units. And each one of those propulsion units has two motors and is sourced by two different batteries. So the level of redundancy compared to, say, a helicopter, which has one rotor and a tail rotor, or even an aircraft that might have two engines or one engine, ours has six. So that level of redundancy automatically makes it much safer. We also are electric. So as, a, as an electric aircraft, there's far fewer moving parts, which helps with maintenance, but also with safety. So Joby is both a manufacturer and an operator. Yes. So yes. can you kind of explain why Joby wants to also be an operator? Because you know you don't see Boeing operating their own airplanes. So why, why would yeah. Joby do that? So one of the great um, benefits of being vertically integrated, in other words, where both you know, the operator and the manufacturer, I look at it from a safety perspective. I oversee safety. And so as an operator, you can immediately provide feedback back to the manufacturer and vice versa. So it's a very tight loop. We know this aircraft inside and out from the very beginning. So the mechanics that are currently part of the OEM will then transition over to the operator side and vice versa. So it just allows for a lot smoother uh, integration of our safety programs. Literally hundreds of companies, many of them largely unknown startups, are scrambling to get a piece of what is viewed as a potentially huge advanced air mobility sector. The financial bar to market entry is high. And so Joby's cash reserve of around $1.2 billion is one factor placing it firmly among the front runners. And in addition to the anticipated urban air taxi services, Joby's eVTOL aircraft is also heading for military service with the US Air Force, which recently ordered nine of Joby's vehicles. The next year or two will be a critical period as Joby and its competitors push to complete FAA type certification.